Well, good morning. I'd like to uh, welcome everyone. Whoever is responsible for the sunshine, we thank you. Thank you, Stacy. I appreciate you doing that. It's been, we just hope the temperatures arrive as well. Uh, we have a number of items for today and some guests. And I want to begin uh, today with uh, um, guests who will um, discuss the enrollment deadline for the Affordable Care Act. And we have with us today from Chicago the Region 5 Director Kathleen Falk from the Department of Health and Human Services and Jolene Joseph from the uh, Health Partners of Northwest Ohio. So ladies, if you'll come up and uh, talk to us about the, um, the coming deadline and what it means for folks and how people can be helped locally. Thank you. Director, good to have you here. It's great an honor to be here, Mayor. And I'll start out, and, and uh, Jolene will, will follow me here. Thank you so much for your leadership here, because what we are finding is that of the about a million three hundred thousand uninsured Ohioans, many still do not know about the new law uh, and their opportunities to get affordable health care. For so many, it'll be the first time in their lives they have this opportunity. So getting the word out is incredibly important because we only have five days to go before this enrollment period expires. So I really appreciate your leadership in helping educate your community. Um, as I described, uh, with over a million uninsured in Ohio, we need to reach everyone. And in this first open enrollment period, uh, there are five days to go before the deadline, which is the end of March 31st, uh, at the end of next Monday. Um, we know the good news here is that when people shop uh, for this affordable health care, they will see in Ohio an average of about 46 plans that are available to them. And to give you an example of how affordable it is, a family of four making 50000 a year can buy insurance uh, through this uh, website and this marketplace uh, for about uh, 40, excuse me, about $156 a month. And it is a really good insurance. It includes uh, 10 essential benefits, everything from doctors and hospital bills to preventive services like high blood pressure screenings and mammograms and uh, pre-cancer uh, screenings. Um, in addition to alcohol and drug abuse and mental health, it's a wide range of really good medical care. So that's the good news. It's available. We've got five days to shop and look around. Now, if you want to get more information, there are lots of places to get information. Uh, one is to go to the healthcare.gov website, which is, of course, open 24 hours a day. The other is to call a toll-free hotline, which is also open 24 hours a day, staffed with a real live human being on the other end of the line. Uh, that number is 1-800-318-2596. Um, in addition to those federal sources of information available 24 hours a day, there are in every community, and Lima is no exception, fabulous people like Jolene who have been trained, are certified, and are helping people every single day see what their options are and to actually walk them through the enrollment if they want. Um, the organization that Jolene is with, which is the Health Partners of Western Ohio, are doing a fabulous job. She'll speak in just a moment. The other places, two places locally that are also doing a lot of assistance and can help you are St. Rita's Medical Center and the Cheryl Allen Southside Community Center. So there is local help right here if you want to talk to a real live person face to face that can answer your questions or on a toll free line or go on to the website. The website is working really great. Uh, just to give you an example, there were over a million people on it Monday. So now is the time to get the word out. Again, Mayor, thank you so much uh, for helping citizens in Lima learn about the law and take uh, the opportunity that's uh, presented now for the first time in, in our nation's history. So thank you. I appreciate, Mayor, allowing us to come and speak and, and share with all of you uh, a lot of hard work that is being placed into making sure that the uninsured uh, members of our community actually do have access to coverage. Since October, we have trained 10 
certified application counselors across all of our sites. We have currently now five sites, one located here in Lima at 441 East 8th Street, the Jean Wright Community Health Center. And we have five certified application counselors that are located at that particular site. Since beginning with the training and offering these services between the marketplace and the Medicaid expansion, we have assisted over 5,000 uh, individuals in talking, educating, informing, and assisting them through the process if they get stumbling uh, if they're at home and online and they're unsure of where to go next. We have completed nearly 2,800 applications, again, combined between uh, the marketplace and Medicaid. And um, with that, when we talk about the applications completed, the covered lives, so it's not just the person sitting in front of us and the actual application being done, but if it's a family of five, the covered lives that we are reaching um, so far has been 2,883 individuals. So that is effective Monday, um, those stats. We are now, um, since this is the, the final kind of what we're defining as the blitz and, and blast that we are trying to, to reach out to individuals, we are seeing about 100 applications being completed daily um, as individuals recognize that as of March 31st, if they do not um, get access to the marketplace, they will have to wait. Um, and we're hoping that they do not have to um, go through another year of being uninsured. So we are in route to completing another 800 applications between now and and uh, Monday, March 31st. If you know of anyone that needs assistance, we are offering hours Monday through Friday, 8 to 4.30. Uh, Walk-ins are welcome. You can call 419-221-3072 if you'd like an appointment. We are also partnering with St. Rita's Medical Center. Uh, we have assisted them with an event within their hospital and provided our certified application counselors to assist. And we are also offering hours at the Lima Public Library. Uh, evening hours and Saturday. So again, those that maybe are working, un unable to get off and come down between the 8 to 4.30, we are extending our hours to offer assistance. Any particular reason why folks are uh, not signing up at this point? Sure. Uh, and first of all, the, they, they, they are, but I, I completely understand and, and appreciate your question. Uh, just to give you a statistic, um, as of about a week ago, uh, there had been 5 million people uh, who have signed up in this first open enrollment period, which is just tremendous. What I, I know you are asking by your good question, Mayor, is there's still a million people in Ohio, and how do we reach them? And one of the things that, one of the reasons I'm here is what we have learned is that still so many people don't know about the law. And that's why um, I'm so grateful for your helping educate your citizens here. That's why you may have seen during March Madness games, you know, uh, TV ads that are, that are uh, appealing to people to tell them you got this deadline coming up. Um, and I think a third reason, to, uh, Mayor, to answer your question is most of us procrastinate, right? And that's what deadlines are for. And so I think that's also some, some normalness about something uh, like this as well. Thank you, thank ladies. You. Director, thank you, thank you for coming to Lima. Thank you very much, Mayor. Very much, thank Jolene. You. Thank you. <clears throat> I just want to emphasize, I think uh, uh, this is really important for young adults um, to know about and get on board. Um, I had uh, a personal circumstance with a daughter who at 23 was diagnosed with cancer. And um, at the time, she would not have had health care, but for the um, generosity of her fellow workers. She didn't qualify for Social Security at the time. And um, again, she would have been without any health care um, and wouldn't have survived the five years that she did. So this is a personal matter for me. Young adults. If you're out of the household, you deserve the care. And we need to take it seriously. Those of us that have um, young adults in our family who aren't covered, uh, we need to encourage them to sign up. If we have neighbors, that um, aren't covered, we need to urge them 
to do the responsible thing for themselves and for their family members. I think uh, Director Falk's uh, comments about the affordability, regardless of all the confusion that was created around the passage of the law, it's time to get past that. You need to investigate this and take it seriously as an opportunity to cover yourself and your family. So thank you, ladies, for your time today. We have a um, transition that's going to be happening at an important place on Collett Street that we call Safety City. Um, this has been a place that has provided uh, training for our uh, children um, for many, many years through the cooperation of the Lima Noon Optimist Club, the Police Department, and the Fire Department. And uh, this year, I don't, I really can't believe he's old enough to be retiring. But Officer Dave has turned in his paperwork to, uh, uh, to retire. And it's time we acknowledge him and Chief uh, uh, Martin and uh, Major Cortez, if you'll come up and talk to us about what's going to be happening as uh, Officer Dave uh, uh, takes uh, a step aside. And we also have a gentleman here from uh, the Optimist Club. Uh, Ken Hall and uh, Bob Lehman. So. Thank you, Mayor, and good morning to everyone. And this is one of those very bittersweet moments um, in that uh, it's bitter in that we have to say goodbye to someone who has uh, served the Lima Police Department and even more importantly, the entire Lima community very well for uh, many years. Uh, but at the same time, there is some excitement and, and good news in that uh, we have someone who uh, will be replacing Officer Dave that I think will do an uh, outstanding job for us just as Officer Dave has done. Uh, and I should also mention that uh, you know, I, I know I'm getting older because more and more of the people that I came on the department with, or even in some cases people who came on the department after me, are retiring. Uh, and Dave is one of those. He and I actually started our career together uh, on April 7th, 1986, uh, when we both uh, received appointments to the Lima Police Department as correction officers in what was then the Lima City Jail. So, um, you know, again, I've, I don't think that there's anyone at the Police Department that I have gotten to know better over the years or that I've gotten to trust or, or have more confidence in uh, than Officer Dave, uh, who is formerly known as Officer, or excuse me, uh, Patrolman David Bastano. But uh, I would have a feeling that there's a lot of people in this community that have never heard of Patrolman Vistano, but they in fact do know Officer Dave. And so Officer Dave is a 1975 graduate of Elida High School. Uh, he attended Northwestern Business College where he majored in business administration. Uh, he has been married now for 38 years to his very lovely wife and, and I will say uh, much better looking half, uh, Deb. And uh, he's also the parents of three adult children, Jennifer, Shelley, and Sean. And uh, where are you? How many grandchildren? No. I've got an 11 year old and April 19th, uh, got a uh, granddaughter coming, Charlotte. I'm sorry, Scarlett. Scarlett. <laughs> Boy, is this, uh, make sure that that is uh, erased from there. <laughs> Scarlett is the name. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think that for when they replay this on GTV2, I don't think they can edit it, so you're in trouble. Well, I'm going to make sure I'm in trouble. Uh, but Dave received his appointment as a police officer July 13th of 1987. Uh, and I will tell you, uh, there's actually, Dave is one of these guys that I've got two full pages here of honors, recognitions, and awards that he has received uh, for his efforts in serving the community for the sake of time and for the uh, sake of not embarrassing him any more than I've already That's done. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to read all of those, but uh, it was in 1991 that he became a D.A.R.E. officer, uh, and then it was in January of 2000 uh, in which he was appointed as the school safety officer to replace then retiring officer Bob Butler. Uh, and uh, so again, I will let Dave speak on his own behalf here in a few minutes. Uh, but. Um, uh, I just cannot say enough good things about the work that he has done in serving this community. Uh, but to replace him, we have Officer Matt Douglas. He was appointed as a police officer on March 8th of 2004. Uh, he com had completed his uh, basic peace officer training with Road State College. Um, 
before joining the police department, uh, he was employed as a full-time officer of Spenceville Police Department from January of 99 to uh, March of 2004. Officer Douglas has received a meritorious certificate, uh, was presented with a life-saving award for his actions on April 5, 2005, where he responded to a call in the 700 block of North McDonald. Uh, a two-year-old child was not breathing. When he arrived, he observed the mother holding the child in her arms, and the child was unresponsive. Patrolman Douglas took the child and quickly named uh, and quickly turned the child over and gave two thrusts to the upper back area and then turned the child over and performed a finger sweep for any objects lodged in the throat. Um, and all of this was able to save the child who then opened her eyes and was taken to the uh, hospital. Uh, he's also received a merit award in May of 2009. Uh, Officer Douglas is a member of the LPD crash team and crisis intervention teams. Uh, and again, with the retirement of Officer Davis Dono, he will be officially assuming the duties of safety or school safety officer. Um, another thing I will tell you about Officer Douglas is again he is someone that does not really like to get up in front of the camera. He doesn't like the upfront accolades but uh, he's been notified that that's something that he's going to have to starting today get used to. <laughs> so he will be speaking also in a few minutes. Uh, the one other piece of information though that I must pass on this morning regarding Safety City with the transition and it actually comes at a very good time because there are still a number of construction projects going on uh, as part of the renovations of Safety City. So this summer with the transition of getting Officer Matt trained uh, as a school safety officer, such things as the RAD kids uh, training that he has to go through, instructor training uh, and the like, um, we are going to be uh, suspending the summer safety programs at Safety City this year. But I want to emphasize it is for this year only. We will begin them again in 2015. Uh, but it is important that we get that information out there to the public uh, because this is about the time of year when most people start calling to try to reserve places, uh, spots for their children and grandchildren in the uh, program. And, and so we are not going to be able to offer that this year. Um, but again, we are very much looking forward to getting it back up and running uh, beginning in 2015. Uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Major Angel Cortez, who would also like to say a few words. Hi. <clears throat> Actually, what can I say about Officer Dave that hasn't already been said? I mean, he's been a huge asset to the Lima Police Department and the city of Lima. And we are all very proud of what he's done. And I can only congratulate him and wish him a great retirement. And I know that he won't be resting. I know he'll just continue working and doing the same things he's been doing all along. But uh, when Dave was selected to be the D.A.R.E. officer, I wasn't part of that selection process. But I know, looking back, that that was the absolute right choice. And I am privileged to be part of the selection process now, the process that brings us Officer Matt Douglas. I've worked with Matt Douglas on third shift for many years, uh, and I know the kind of person he is. I know he's a good man. I know he's good with children. And I have nothing but the utmost confidence that he's going to do a wonderful job and pick up right where Dave left off. And uh, I would like to congratulate Matt and uh, his wife is here with him, supporting him. He has a great uh, family structure, and I think we absolutely selected the right person. So there's not going to be a whole lot of downtime. Matt's going to pick this up where Dave left it off, and we're going to continue uh, forward with this. And uh, the Lima Police Department absolutely supports this program 100%, and we're very happy for Matt and his family. Well, never for lack of words, but, uh, you know, I am today. You know, it's bittersweet. Um, you know, I guess the one thing I, I really want, want to thank um, the city of Lyman, this community, Valen County, for the privilege to be able to serve in this capacity. Because it's, I think it's a, a tremendous honor that, um, that um, I've got to be part of, uh, you know, uh, involved with helping others, especially kids. My dad, you know, I grew up in Lima. Uh, I frolicked around uh, the South End as a kid. Back in those days, we ran all over the place. Uh, you know, you'd, dad would tell me to come home before it's dark. But I had the extra special privilege of having a dad that showed me what it was like to serve people. He owned a little party shop on Vine and Atlantic uh, years ago, back in the late 50s, early 60s, until he passed in uh, 1970. But during those times, um, he'd always have a stack of uh, 
uh, cigarette cartons that are torn apart, and there would be, and what he did, he, when people came in, he would write down how much they owed, so it was like a, uh, you know, a tab that he let his customers run. And uh, I know in one particular time, uh, teaching me lessons that time, he took that, uh, he took one of those uh, cards that had a tremendous amount of uh, uh, numbers on it, as I remember as a small kid, and we went to one of the houses that was, um, that was the customer, and the man had just died not too long before that, and I went with my dad when he took it to that uh, family, a mother with about four or five kids, and he told them, and he just tore that up uh, in front of that mother and said, you've got hard times right now, and this is all me. So he taught me, um, you know, as a young kid, that uh, our most precious thing is to help others and be of service to others. And that's all I've got to say. Thank you. Thank you. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Chief Martin and Major Cortez. Um, I, I believe that uh, I, I think exciting times are going to be ahead of us. And I'd like to thank my wife, too. I wouldn't be able to do it without my wife and my family. So um, I have, uh, we've got a lot of training coming up, and I'm looking forward to teaching the kids. And uh, a lot of the things coming up with the new Safety City, it's going to be modernized. Buildings are going to look, right now, they're looking pretty awesome. And the Optimist Club and the construction people, they're doing a great job on it. And I, I just can't wait to get started. There's going to be a lot of safety stuff, and I think it's going to look beautiful whenever when everything's said and done. So I look forward to teaching the kids the safety and also about the drugs and alcohol and keeping them off of that. So again, I'd like to also thank Ken and Bob. I know I'm going to be working with them a lot, and I'm going to be working with Chris and Warren a lot. I look forward to that as well. And I'd just like to also thank all the Besides Chief Martin and Major Cortez, Major Baker and Major Protzman, I know they all had a help in selecting me, and I'm not, not planning on letting them down, okay? And I hope that uh, I'll be able to do as much and all the kids remember when they're adults, just like I remember going through it when, I'm, when I was a kid. So I look forward to that. Just on uh, behalf of the Optimist Club, we'd like to thank the city. You know, this is a, an important project that we continue to do year after year, and their support, along with the, you know, the club, uh, on an annual basis, uh, supports it to a tune of about fifteen thousand dollars a year. So it's a lot of money for the club, and it's our home show that we have once a year. It's where we raise our funds, but uh, we're also happy that uh, Matt's been selected. Uh, we've had some conversation with them, and excited. And, and another part of this is the fire department. Th those folks are, are an integral part of, of what we do there. And lastly, we still have some lots to be sold to help fund this program. So if you, you have an interest, get a hold of Ben uh, uh, Anderson. Uh, he, he's on uh, Elm Street, the state farm agent, and he'll be glad to get you a, a lot. Thank you. Should I offer Mrs. Douglas down here? Very good. Well, thank you all. Thank you. Um, staying on the theme of safety services, uh, Chief Hefner is here uh, to, along with the law director, I believe, to uh, do some swearing in of new firemen, firewomen. <laughs> Firefighters. <laughs> That's the term. Fire Firefighters. <laughs> well, as we continue this theme of transition, I do want to thank Dave for all of his service. Uh, Officer Vistano is an uh, integral part of this city and the safety city for a long time. And I'm hearing good things about Matt. I hope uh, Officer Matt, that name carries the same weight that Officer Dave named here. Uh, the reason I'm here is I'd like to introduce our newest firefighters. Uh, the two behind me have this is Deborah Smith and Kendall Herod have undergone uh, a long, long, extensive, uh, they've had a long, extensive uh, process to get where they are right now. We've interviewed probably 60 people uh, and choosing seven, and these are four and five of the seven. Deborah Smith is a threatened 
for the longtime resident city of Lima. She comes to us, I believe, from St. Rita's Hospital. Kendall, uh, Uniopolis, Wapak area. Uh, he has his certification. He's a paramedic, but he has to go to fire school to fulfill some other needs that we have. Deborah's going to go to fire school, so they'll be gone for eight weeks, and when they come back, uh, we're going to put them to, to good use. Uh, all directors offered to give them the, uh, the oath of office, and then I think afterwards we'll give them a chance to say anything if they'd like. Chief, uh, <clears throat> thank you very much, and I appreciate the, uh, the honor of uh, swearing in these newest members of the Lima Fire Department. Before I get to that, though, I would uh, like to also offer my uh, congratulations to Officer Dave. And Chief Martin, you said you felt old uh, because you and Officer Dave started in the, together in the 1980s. Well, Dave and I started together in grade school uh, in the 1960s. Uh, so uh, you're a young pup. With respect to the fire department, um, I had the opportunity to swear in the first round of people uh, a month or so ago, and I want to um, reiterate uh, briefly just the comments that I made back then that as you folks sit there in the audience, I want you to remember that these two individuals may someday be in the position of literally saving your life. And you think about the importance uh, of the position that they are about to undertake and uh, how appreciative I think we all are uh, for the efforts and bravery that we're sure that they will demonstrate throughout the years. So, with that, after I say the word I, please state your names and then just uh, follow on after me with the oath. You raise your right hands, please. I, I Deborah Smith, Kendall Herod, do hereby solemnly swear, do hereby solemnly swear, that I will support. I will. 